Hey, it's Mike, and welcome back to the Mystic Smoker Shop. And if you're watching this video, it's probably because you purchased a roller, a Mystic Smoker's door band roller. This roller here rolls the uh, two inch wide, quarter inch thick door band material, the vertical door bands. And uh, in this video, what we're gonna do is, is show just putting the unit together. Basically, a set of video instructions. A whole lot easier to, uh, to follow instructions, at least for me. Uh, in a video. So first thing we want to do is identify the parts. Uh, we've got the jack system here, these two, these two pieces here. Uh, the drive roller, which is there, two idler rollers, one on either side. And, and in this case, they're in the center, center closed position. And I have found, uh, after a couple years of, of using one of these, that's where I stay. Uh, I haven't used any of these, these other holes out here. I went ahead and put them in here in case we do some upgrades or uh, uh, not really upgrades, but optional roller sizes, maybe some that, that have different shapes to them. And that'll give us uh, plenty of opportunity to make some changes there later on. But uh, primarily we will stay in these two inside upper holes. That's what rolls the, uh, that's the, the standard position for rolling the door bands, at least on the, uh, the cookers that, that we're worried about. Uh, so the uh, carrying on, there are three fixed posts, this one here and uh, two here. They are the ones that hold our two laser cut uh, quarter inch walls together. The, the right and left wall or front and back, whatever you want to call them. So I will go ahead and pull this one apart and uh, we'll put it back together. Okay, so here's everything laid out and then a real quick uh, better view of what our parts are and how they're going to come. This is the the jack part of the uh, assembly and it actually goes like that and when you get it it will have uh, its bushings, uh, bronze bushings already on. So there's an inner bushing, uh, the, the roller bushing and then an outer bushing uh, and then of course the e-clip that holds that on. So this will come assembled uh, exactly like you see it. Of course, this side will be filled out. Uh, come assembled just like that. But just so that uh, you can see the parts that are here uh, laid out, essentially that's what we have. Uh, bronze bushings on the inside, bronze roller bushing, and then the e-clip or a bronze bush, a uh, flat bushing on the outside and then the e-clip that holds it on. This is the uh, drive roller and uh, it's got its own uh, bushings here and, and it's set up much the same with an E-clip on one side and a cotter pin on the other. I elected not to use a cotter pin on this end. Uh, it, it would get in the way of some other things. And then of course, uh, the hole for the, the drive tube. And we'll talk about that just a little bit later. Uh, then the two idler uh, rollers. Uh, and they're thin bushing washers. These are steel bushings. There's really no load on this, uh, side to side load. So uh, I like to go with steel uh, bushings here rather than bronze bushings. Uh, of course, there's two of those. And then uh, the, the bolts that hold it together that go in the uh, fixed standoffs there. And then the grade eight bolts that will uh, go through and act as axles for the, uh, the idler rollers. So, uh, and that's pretty straightforward. And of course we've got our plates uh, to put this together. All you need is a three quarter inch wrench, uh, needle nose pliers or whatever you wanna do to put these E-clips in. And uh, I like using the little impact driver there. You could of course use a, a nine sixteenths wrench or socket, uh, but it just makes it go a lot faster just using the impact for me. So. Um, let me go ahead and uh, get set up and we'll slap this thing together right quick. All right, so the first thing we want to do is put our two stationary posts down on the bottom. Uh, and all I've done is run the, the 3 8 bolts in there. Take the other side and just put a, uh, a bolt in one of these to hold it, to hold the assembly together at least, but we can still slip our drive roller in. So it doesn't matter which side you want the, the drive roller to stick out on. Uh, they handle par portion of the drive roller that is. Uh, either way is fine, it, it doesn't really matter. 
just slip it inside. Of course, it's got a uh, bushing on the inside, bushing on the other side, the right and left side, and just let that sit down in like that. And then take our jack assembly, make sure that it has retained a bushing here and a bushing there. Slip that in. Again, it doesn't make any difference which side goes where. And put a bolt in to hang that. And you go ahead and bolt both sides. And just be careful that you don't cross thread anything. And now we have the uh, jack assembly in. Make sure throughout all this that everything is turning good, and it, it is. And when we turn this, obviously it's pulling that uh, jack arm up. And the, the, drive, the drive roller is just flopping around in there. So we can snug these up by hand just a little bit more just to take up some of that sloppiness. But we don't want to tighten them all the way because we still have to put these rollers in and they're very thin little uh, bushings, steel bushings. And like I said, I like to run these two holes right here. You can run these, these out here. Um, it's, it's a whole lot less, uh, takes a whole lot less pressure to do the roll from out here, but you can't get as much roll if that makes sense. So uh, we'll, we'll have options with bigger roller wheels later on to utilize those, but these two holes are primarily what we'll be using. And I put one of our, and I take a dab of grease, just grease this up good and make sure that, that all of these bushing surfaces are, are greased pretty good. Uh, it's not gonna hurt you if you get grease on the top of this. Uh, you don't need, uh, they don't need to be knurled. My first version, I toyed with uh, knurling this because I thought that it would spin. It, it does not. The pressures are such that, that it won't slip and spin. Uh, and even if you have grease or oil on there, it still will grab and, and pull just like it needs to. So grab your washer, uh, grab one of the two grade eight bolts and position this such that you can grab the washer and then go through, through the roller. Take the other washer and sometimes I take another bolt and just hold that washer in place and then, and then push it through like that. And take one of the uh, nuts, the nylon lock nuts, and put it on the back. Now, when you tighten these, these we will of course tighten our post bolts up. This one, this one, and that one. We will tighten all of those good and it will lock everything into place. We do not want to tighten these big nuts right here down because you can actually squeeze the two sides in uh, and there's a just enough tolerance where that roller will spin perfectly when these bolts are pulled up tight. So uh, don't over tighten or don't over tighten these. Just snug them up and you can even have a little bit of back and forth is fine. Uh, but just don't over tighten them and, and squeeze in. And put it in on the other side. And I can grab that washer with my bolt. Just a little bit hanging through. And then take my roller, stick it on through. All right, so that's everything on the inside, and we can now go ahead and just snug these down real good. And everything still moves good. Good. Uh, and it is locked down and it's super rigid at this point, which is exactly what we want. Uh, and I constantly want to be checking to make sure that everything is moving because I have on occasion uh, not paid attention and accidentally got two of these in there and the tolerances are, uh, are what they are. 
So if you put two in here, you can accidentally uh, put too much pressure on and things won't move. You're not going to hurt anything, but uh, just keep checking yourself as you're going along. Make sure everything spins and rolls uh, like it should. So we're all good there. Now we want to put the yoke systems together because remember this piece travels up and down and it pushes and pulls our drive roller. So we've got uh, two bushings here and we'll pull that up to where they fit. Kind of fidgety not being able to see with the, the camera they're trying to let you see too and then just a couple of uh washers in this case it happens to be bronze bushings i will probably change this to steel washers as we go on there's no need in this being a bronze bushing here there's no load on it uh, it's just giving me some space to put this e-clip in right here all right so putting the e-clips on is uh pretty straightforward i just in this case i've just got a, a bronze punch but you could use anything just to uh, get the e-clip in position and then bump it in bump it in and make sure that it get that it goes all the way in there it went all the way into its slot now i'm not going to put all these others in because i'm pulling this one right back apart to go for shipping uh, but essentially that's where we're at let's go to the other side and put our bronze bushings in I have to lift to get it in position. There we are. And our bronze bushing, or our, in future models, will be a, a steel washer, thin steel washer. And of course, we'll put our eclipse on there and. over here I'm not gonna pop it down because I don't want to have to keep pulling those eclipse on and off now in this case we have just a cotter pin there uh, which is fine it's gonna be more than adequate and now our system is working I guess we could put that washer nut on now uh, here's the uh, Here's the dilemma. We need a handle, and I like the handle to be about this long because it gives me enough leverage that, that I don't have to strain while I'm pulling it. Some guys have made them a wheel, uh, which works, which seems to work just fine. Uh, some guys have made a single arm handle. I don't know that I like the single arm, arm handle enough because it, it doesn't give you even balance on either side. In other words, you're putting all the pressure on one side and um, it just seems more logical to me to have even pressure doing it with two hands. So uh, I like um, the handle that I have used for years on my original model of this, which is there. Um, I like this design. It's not the, the prettiest design, and I've dropped it and kind of bent it out of shape, but still, uh, it works perfectly. And this is the way that I would recommend. Either way that you want to go, uh, we need to hook something up onto this shaft. And we want it to be removable, right? In case something happens and I need to send you a part or, or whatever may, may occur, uh, you may need to pull this assembly back apart. So I would recommend uh, putting a piece of flat bar on here but you could use a, a wheel or whatever you want to use. And I will supply this sleeve that is already pre-drilled to match that hole. And all you have to do is slip it through and put the supply pin in, which I don't have sitting in front of me right here. This pin right here just locks it in position and uh, you can operate it like that. And here's what I like to do with two hands, and that kind of evens that load. If you're pushing this way, you're kind of torquing to one side. So I like to roll evenly. 
like that. And then when you're, when you're done with the tool, just pull this off and uh, set it aside. Now, another uh, dilemma is feet, or not dilemma, but a, another thing to consider is the feet. At least, at least initially, I will be providing uh, four pieces of just flat bar stock that you can weld uh, anywhere on here that you want. I like to, uh, to have my feet in this position here. Uh, I've seen guys put them in closer because of the way their, their table or their, their setup was uh, arranged. It just made it easier for them to have them in closer. Uh, I've seen guys even put them on the inside there. Of course, you don't want to join, you don't want to weld these two pieces together because we need to pull them back apart, right? Uh, but I've seen them put a piece right there and a piece on the other side, and that way they can just take a clamp, reach in here, and hold that down like that. So, uh, at least initially, I'll be providing this times four, and you can weld these on wherever you want to weld them. And at least initially, what I would do is let them hang over the inside about a quarter of an inch, and then the rest out here. That way you can put you a decent bead there and a decent bead here uh, on each of the four corners, and maybe even drill a hole in it if you want to use bolts. Uh, I just clamp the thing down and uh, and go with that. So that's the mounting system. All right, the handle system. Uh, I will probably uh, make this handle an option. Uh, it's a pretty cool option. Um, and there's a hole here that this pin will go through and lock everything together and I'm, I'm not really in love with this pin so much because uh, it doesn't look as elegant as the rest of my handle but uh, it does work and, and at least until I come up with another option that's what we're going to go with uh, and a word of warning for this tool here uh, this is an incredibly powerful tool this jack screw or acme lead screw is what it's called has enough power in it that it will actually, it, it has enough power to pull this whole unit apart. Um, you have to remember that, that even smaller versions of that jack screw, which this one is smaller, uh, that's out of a pickup truck jack. Uh, of course, I buy that material uh, from a master car uh, and it's larger. So that's an even heavier setup than this one which came out of a uh, half-ton pickup truck. So uh, remember that these things are lifting cars and it's on those scissor jacks, which, uh, you know, to, to make that work takes an incredible amount of pressure. So my point here is uh, when you're winding this up and down, make sure that you stop when you get up to the top uh, because there is a pin on the bottom of this jack area here and there is enough power in here that you can shear that little, that little, it's a smaller version of that. You can shear that right off. You're not gonna hurt anything, but you can shear that off. If you bottom out pushing that way, there is enough power here to bend either one of these huge pieces of, uh, that's a, a one and three eighths cold roll there. It, there's enough power there that you can bend uh, that or maybe dimple your little bronze bushings, which wouldn't be the end of the world, but uh, you just don't want to do that. The message here is it's an incredibly powerful system. Uh, don't be tempted to over torque. Say I'm at the bottom right there and it wouldn't take but me going to about right here that I could tear something up. So with great power comes great responsibility. Okay, so let's go ahead and, and roll a piece of flat bar. This is quarter inch by two inch flat bar. And essentially we're gonna turn it into this. This is one of the vertical door bands uh, this one happens to be for a 30 inch radius tank, but um, any, any radius tank is going to be fine on here. Uh, so the first thing we want to do is uh, load the, the piece of flat bar stock and we'll pull uh, the drive roller up uh, with this handle. Again, I can feel when it stops right there and don't keep pushing because you will shear that, uh, shear that pin off the bottom. Now, uh, a couple of guys have asked me, why don't you put a stop up here and it'll stop it? 
Uh, again, I would rather shear that cheap little pin off than I would uh, bottom out and, and do some other damage. Just know that when it stops, it stopped. Uh, and then start putting a little bit of pressure going down. So we're going to feed the piece all the way into the roller right here. And we're going to make sure that it's, that it's straight. It's, it doesn't have to be exactly straight, but you don't want it cocked to one side. Because when we're rolling, if it is cocked to one side, you will induce a little bit of twist into your part. And if you notice that piece is perfectly straight, and it's not hard to keep them straight, just kind of keep an eye on it. Uh, I have seen a couple of guys that have put a couple of uh, either nylon blocks right there or maybe even a wood block right there. I may even put some holes here later on that we can attach some small blocks. Uh, maybe maybe going up and down right here to help keep straight, but just haven't done that yet. Um, we'll see how things go. You know, these things, these projects evolve as they go. Uh, put just a little bit of pressure on it and then give it a roll. And it doesn't take much at all. And you can look through the little carry handle holes here and see when it's coming to the end. If you do happen to roll out of it accidentally, like that right there, just come off. I generally come off one turn, push it back in, get it set in place, go back one turn to where I was, and then give it just a little bit more. Again, don't give it too much uh, on one turn. You want to do these rolls incrementally. Give it just a little bit more and come back. And now we're starting to see it get some shape to it. And once it starts, once it starts uh, moving, uh, it really starts moving pretty quick. Again, just making sure that we're running straight, and we are. And the nice thing about this handle is it pushes out of the way. And I will eventually, uh, just for the heck of it, make a version that's got an, an, an electric drive on it. I just haven't done that yet. I'll sit and roll uh, probably 20 of these at a time. And it can get old. And we're going to pull it out at this point and compare it to... It's pretty darn close. So we're gonna set it on top. Remember we're not, we don't wanna check against an example behind it or in front of it. You actually wanna sit on top of it. So I'm not quite there yet. If you notice, I've got just a little bit more. So we're gonna go loosen one turn, slide it in, get it set up on the, the rollers, make sure we're straight. Go back to that turn, give just a tiny bit more. may have gone too much it feels like I'm putting a lot of pressure on it so I think I went too much I did uh, so you, see, you see it doesn't take much at all um, and but that's not a problem if you go a little bit too much and this may be too loud for the uh, for the camera but what I do is I take it and I hit it a couple of times on the table 
and then that will generally squeeze it back out a little bit. And I did it exactly perfect. And there we are. Let me make sure that you can see that. Yeah, that, that radius worked out exactly right. Now we're not gonna trust that. What we're gonna do now is uh, bring it over to a tank and get the camera set up better. In the moment of truth. Oh, that is perfect. I really like that. So there we go. Uh, another reason that I don't wanna attach those on here now is um, because this whole unit is designed to fit in let me find that box. <clears throat> this unit is designed to fit this shipping box. It's the uh, U.S. Post Office flat rate box. Uh, and the reason is uh, we're about 30, 35, 32 pounds, 35 pounds, something like that. Um, I haven't weighed it since uh, I made a couple of changes on it. And uh, so it's pretty heavy. If we shipped it UPS, it's going to be uh, pretty expensive, that and, and FedEx. Uh, but anything in this box is uh, $15.45, uh, no matter where it goes in the United States uh, or the territory. So it's designed around the shipping box that it will travel in. Uh, this one was uh, just a little bit too large for that. Uh, and I scaled it down in areas that aren't going to make any difference. This could come down a little bit. The feet could come up just a little bit. So uh, essentially it is built for this box so that you don't end up paying $30 or $40 shipping. Instead, it's just, uh, you know, the $15 shipping. And if I put these on, uh, that hampers me put, being able to put it in the box. And another reason that I'm not providing a handle uh, is obviously this handle will not fit in there. And as you saw, uh, I really like having that added leverage of a longer handle. It's not hard. It's just by the time you do several of them, it's nice to be able to get out there on the, the ends of that handle. It's not as hard on you, not as much work. So um, that's why I provide the little cup, wherever the little cup is here. And uh, you can just take a piece of flat bar uh, if you're rolling these things, you've got plenty of flat bar around and uh, just weld that on or fabricate some kind of wheel or, or, or whatever you want to do. Uh, if I did provide this piece of long bar, which is the way that I would recommend going, then obviously that would bump us up to a different uh, shipping class and either double or triple the shipping just for a, a $2 piece of, $2 or $3 piece of flat bars. So I hope that that was a, a decent enough uh, video instruction. I, I think that you should be able to put it together and use it without uh, any problem at all for a years to come now. Just make sure that we keep everything greased. Uh, I pull this one apart, I don't know, every 50 or 60 uh, rolls and um, you know just clean it up a little bit and put some more grease on it. The uh, um, mule scale you know comes off of this stuff pretty easy when it's bent. So, uh, you know, it will get down here and eventually get in the rollers and, and kind of gum things up a little bit. It's super easy to clean off, uh, just wipe it off with paper towel and then slap the thing back together and go on about your business. Uh, I have rolled literally hundreds of, uh, of pieces of door band uh, or, or door bands with this roller here and it's not near as heavily built and nicely built as these are. So you should be able to use this tool for years. If you do have any problems, uh, I'm pretty easy to find, uh, either on Facebook or, of course, the mysticsmokers.com website, uh, or at the email mysticsmokers dot, or mysticsmokers at gmail.com. Uh, and a lot of guys have my phone number, so I, I'm a pretty easy person to find. If uh, for some reason you, you do, for example, over torque this thing and, and bend one of the shafts or, or whatever happens, uh, just reach out to me and, and we'll get you taken care of pretty quickly. So uh, I think that's a, a good spot to wrap this video up. And uh, if you like the video, please hit subscribe uh, to see more episodes coming out and hit the like button. The uh, like button goes a long way uh, in ranking the videos uh, on the YouTube channel uh, in how they are searched. So uh, if you'll make sure you do that, please. And 
uh, don't hesitate to comment. Uh, I respond to all of the comments uh, and I enjoy uh, seeing tips uh, or recommendations or, or whatever comments that, that guys are providing. Uh, I do get a lot of, uh, of comments and I appreciate reading those. So uh, I will see you in the next episode.